and welcome to another painting tutorial for how to paint the triumph of Saint Catherine in the colours of the Order of Our Martyred Lady. Brace yourselves because this is a long one. For this tutorial you will need a pot of contrast medium, dark oath flesh, gilliman flesh, wildwood, leviathan blue, nasdrag yellow, volupus pink, eandon yellow, Apothecary White, Flesh Terrors Red, Dark Angels Green, Basilicanum Grey, Griffhound Orange, Blood Angels Red, Skeleton Horde, Snakebite Leather, Cygore Brown, Black Templar, and Agaros Dunes. In your layer paints and base paints, you will need Iron Warriors, Iron Hand Steel, Storm Host Silver, Retributor Armor, Liberator Gold, Dawnstone, Administratum Grey, and Grey Seer. Orthuan Grey, Evil Sun Scarlet, Wild Rider Red, Fire Dragon Bright, Kislev Flesh, Screaming Skull, Flayed One Flesh, and Carrack Stone. Before you begin painting the model, you'll notice that I've left it in sub-assemblies. And these are kind of the kind of chunks that I'm going to be painting the model in. So we're going to be starting with the base, then painting the sarcophagus, and followed up with the six sisters. Uh, this just makes it a lot easier to get at all the details, um, on the, particularly on the base and uh, around the sarcophagus in the middle, because when the sisters are all glued onto the base, it gets a little bit tricky to get in at all of those angles. So try and keep it in as many, few sub-assemblies as possible. You could leave the cherubs off if you wish to, but I've glued them on just so I can do all of it as a single part. So we're going to start with the base. Okay, so starting with the base, we're going to be using Skeleton Horde. And this is going to be for all the paving uh, slabs and all of the kind of, the you know, the marble stonework that you see. We're going to try and avoid all of the um, Sororitas symbols that are around here, so because they're going to be a slightly different colour. But for now, we're just going to be tackling all of this stuff. So what we're going to do is, I'm using a medium layer brush, and we're going to grab some Skeleton Horde on our brush. Uh, sort of this kind of, of, of an amount and then we're just going to pick a paving slab and we're going to go a slab at a time in big broad brush strokes in order to kind of make it nice and smooth and creamy as possible so we're just going to pick an area to start and I'm going to start right here at the front and we're just going to make contact with the model and we're just going to brush towards the edge like that and we just want to be very careful as we go along pulling off all of the excess so it just looks like nice and smooth beige marble. Like so. And when you do it like this, you can just spot where you've got a little too much skeleton hoard. So you'll get a nice smooth looking paving slab. Similarly again, on this one, I'm gonna grab a little bit more paint than that. I'm just gonna make contact with the model somewhere around here. I'm just gonna paint towards the edge, like so. The few, fewer brush strokes you use, the better, to just avoid kind of getting too much of it as like a scratched look effect. So we can put this on later, like battle damage. So we're just going to go around and do all of the parts that we want to be this colour, like this. I'm just going to take it nice and methodically to achieve this result. So it takes a little bit of time, but the finish is worth it. If you can, avoid all the little fallen rocks that you'll see around because they're going to be a slightly different colour again. So we're just going to grab this little area here, like so. I'm just going to keep going like this. So I'm going to go up the steps now. I'm going to start here, pull it and pull it towards the edge.
like this. Important thing to forget, not for, not to forget, is to do where the steps meet each other, which is this underside part here, and similarly along this side there. So we're just going to keep going like this until we've got the effect of, of how we want it to look. Next up, we're going to use some Agaros dunes, and this is for all the recesses of this stone and any kind of broken areas that you can see sometimes, like just around here on the on the edge of the fallen rock. Um, and so we're going to be quite controlled with how we apply this. So we're just going to take a tiny little bit of it on our brush and we're just going to start with our recesses. So we're just going to, here, we're just going to run the Agaros dunes in the recesses of the stone, like so. And similarly again, like this. And we go around and do all of our recesses like this, just to give it some a nice kind of almost like the, the dirt has built up inside these recesses. On the edges of the fallen stone, where you've got broken rock, so for example, just down here, we're just going to dab some of the agarost dunes over the area to kind of give us a bit of a textured look. You can be quite messy here. So it doesn't have to be like precision dabs or anything. It just, you just kind of want to do it in like so. Like that. Next, with the Agaros dunes, much like how we did with the Skeleton Horde, we're just going to pick up these optional these alternating um, sun ray patterns. And we're gonna use, we're gonna kind of do what we did with the skulls and hordes. So we're just gonna give our nice, broad and slow uh, brush strokes. So we're gonna start kind of probably around here and move it into the recess because we want these to be somewhat darker than the skeleton horde ones. Like that. So we just wanna Like this. So we've got that alternating pattern once again. Just want to be really careful around the skeleton horde. And use our brush to lift off any kind of splodges on the main part of the stone. So we don't want it to look uneven or slightly odd with the finished detail. Like that. So just gonna go around and do all of the miniature like this, and then we'll come back. With that Agaros dunes applied, we're now going to add just a little bit of Nasdreg yellow into some of the areas that we want to be a slightly different colour again. So we're just going to take a little bit of it on our brush and we want to darken down these sun rays again. And we're just, so we're just going to add the Nasdreg yellow over the top. Like so. You can also just pick out sort of different areas within the kind of central motif to kind of just darken them down a little bit further. So what we're going to do is we're going to, this central line around the middle is going to be yellow as well. And again, just want to be very careful around all that lovely skeleton horde that we've painted in. You just like I'm doing here 
very carefully just drawing around the panel like so. So we're going to go around and do all of these panels how we want them and then we're going to come back. With that Nasdrag yellow uh, applied we're now kind of done for now with all of the kind of the, the bleached bone marble type stuff that we want to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on to like the fallen rocks that you can see just in amongst here that I've left as grey here. And for this we're going to be using Basilicanum grey. So we're just going to grab some on our brush and we're just going to start painting it on to all of these bits. Just trying to be a little bit careful around that skeleton hoard that we've already applied. Like so. With that basilicon and grey applied, we're now going to add apothecary white to all of the fleur de lis, I think they're called, the rest of the stonework. Um, so we're just going to grab a fair amount of this on our brush because um, we want it to be nice and dark, but we don't want it to be kind of like a dark grey or anything just to save ourselves some time later on when we're layering it up. So we're just going to kind of layer it on nice and thick. And this is just to kind of darken down these white parts. And as I say, to make our lives a bit easier so we don't have to layer it up or anything from a darker grey like Basilicanum or something. So we're just being quite liberal with it over these bits. Yeah, just go around and do all of these, like this. I'll see you in the next bit. Once that apothecary white is dry, we're going to use some basilicanum grey in the recesses between the tiles. And this is just to give it a little bit of shade. We're not going to do it on all the recesses, we're just going to do it on some of them to give that impression again that some dirt has built up. So we just take a little bit on a kind of small layer brush. We just want to very carefully pick a recess, and then start painting it in like so. And this just gives a little bit of definition to those uh, fleur de lis. I'm just going to go with it, fleur de lis. as the rose tiles. So just be a little bit careful whilst you're doing this and just pick the areas at random. You don't need to do every recess, as I said. Just pick the ones that you want to do, just to create kind of a, a little bit of depth in some areas, like so. Once all that stonework is dry, we're going to give everything a light dry brush of Screaming Skull. We want to be really careful here because we don't want to kind of get it all over these flat, smooth panels. We just want to catch the edges. So we just want to very slowly take our time just catching the edge like so. We want to do this across all of the stones, so including that Basilicanum grey, all of the Apothecary white, and all the Skeleton Horde. We just want to work our way across the model, like this. Just catching all those raised edges. As we go. Now 
With that dry brush applied, we're now going to work on the metallics on the base. And so we're going to start with some Retributor armor, and this is for all the large central icons. I keep saying fleur de lis. Don't know if it's right. But we're just going to keep rolling with it. So we're just going to brush this over. Taking extra special care not to get any on all that lovely skeleton hoard. Next up, we're going to shade all of that gold with some Gilliman flesh. And so, like, we just want to start painting it on, like so. And once that Gilliman flesh is dry, we're going to highlight the gold with some Liberator gold. So it's just a nice and simple edge highlight. Like so. Once all that gold is highlighted, we're going to work on the silver details. And for this, we're going to be using Iron Warriors. So we're just going to find all the silver details. And these are things like the vents here towards the back of the base. As well as the skulls that you'll see on the central dice. You just want to block in this whole area. like this, and also the pipes that run along the front steps. Like here. Next up, we're gonna shade all that silver with some silicon and gray. And next up, we want to highlight all of that Iron Warriors with some Iron Hand Steel. With that silver highlighted, the last thing to do on the base is the petals that you can see scattered around the back. And for this, we're going to be using Flesh Terrors Red and Blood Angels Red. And you really just want to kind of pick them at random to kind of create some variation with them. So we just want to put some Flesh Terrors Red on a couple of these petals like this. And... Just picking picking them as we go along. Just being really careful around all those details that we've already painted. Now we'll add a few Blood Angels Reds ones. And 
with that, the base is now complete. So we're going to start moving on to the rest of our sub-assemblies, but this gives us a good place to start from. Um, we will do the rim at the end of the uh, at the end of the model, but for now, the model's looking pretty fantastic as it is. Cool. So the next part that we're going to move on to is we're going to start work on the sarcophagus. So the first colour we're going to work on is the bed of the sarcophagus, of what the bed of the body is lying on. And for this, we're going to use Flesh Terrors Red, and this is just going to be around this part of the, uh, of the, of the sarcophagus itself, because this top part is going to be a dark wooden colour. But this part, we want to be Flesh Terrors Red, and we want to be nice and dark. So we're just going to grab some Flesh Terrors Red on our medium layer brush, and we're going to start painting it on. Like so. And we're going to go around and just do all of these bits. Being quite liberal with the paint because we want it to be nice and dark and consistent. Once that flesh tear is red is dry, we're going to paint the top part of the frame. We're going to do this with Saigor Brown. So much in the same way that we did with the flesh tears, we're going to be quite liberal with the paint because we want this to be nice and dark. So we're just going to pick an area and we're just going to start brushing it on. Like so. I'm just being quite methodical with it so I can keep the colour nice and even. Igor Brown is dry, we're going to paint the underside and we're going to do some thinned down iron warriors and this is for all the metal parts and these are things like the grav uh, bits you can see around here and also these things and the, and the jets there. So we're just going to start painting this iron warriors all over these details like so. Once that Iron Warriors is dry, we're going to shade this entire area with Basilicanum Grey. And we're going to go over all of the area, including the, the white that we've left, because we're going to be colouring that in with black. So we're just going to very quickly smash this Basilicanum Grey all over. The bottom. The sarcophagus. Once that basilicanum grey is dry, we're going to give it a layer of black templar, but not the metallic parts. We're going to keep those silver, obviously. So we're just going to paint the black templar over all this basilicanum grey, just to give it a nice dark black. With that Black Templar applied, we're now going to focus on all the shields before we highlight the silver. And for this, we're going to be using some thinned down Retributor armor. So what we want to do is we just want to paint some nice, even coats of gold all over the shield. Like so. Don't forget to get the inside of the shield. Like here. And 
Next up, we're going to shade all of those gold details with some Gilliman flesh. So we're just going to grab some on a brush and we're just going to start painting it all over the gold. Once that Gilliman flesh is dry, we're going to give those gold parts a highlight of Liberator Gold. With those Liberator Gold highlights applied, we're going to just highlight the silver details with some Iron Hand Steel. So we just want to take some on our brush and just find those highlights. With that iron hand steel applied, we're now going to add some skeleton hoard to these rocks just down here where the sarcophagus meets the base. This is just to tie them in with what we've already done on the base. Just want to add the skeleton hoard like this. Now that the sarcophagus and some of those metallics are finished, we're going to move on to the rest of the details and we're going to use Flesh Terrors Red for the bedding, the soft part of the bedding, just in here, as you can see, which the body of St. Catherine, I'm assuming, lies upon. So we're going to grab some Flesh Terrors Red with our brush. I'm just going to very carefully paint around her because we don't want to splodge on that robe because it makes our life a lot easier as we want it to be white. So we're just going to very carefully paint this flesh terrors red around all those extra details that are on this part of the mold. like so. Next up we're going to paint in the black of the gloves and of the bodice of the body on the bed. That's a lot of alliteration. So we're just going to use some black Templar and we're just going to paint it over these details. And again we're going to try and be quite careful around that white robe. Next up we're going to paint in the gold armour. And for this, we're going to be using Retributor Armour. So we're just going to start painting some thinned down Retributor Armour on our palette over all of the gold armour plates. Next up, we're going to paint in the remaining silver details. And these are things like the bracelets around the ankle, just round here. There's a headpiece on the skull. And it's the central part of the black armour. And next we're going to paint the bone parts, and these are the bones of St. Catherine and the skull, but also the candles on the back of the sarcophagus. I keep calling it a sarcophagus, I'm not sure if that's right, but we're just going to start painting the skeleton hoard over these bones. Like this. And next up we're going to paint all of the white robes with apothecary right, and we're also going to do the reliefs on the side of the bed frame. I will come up with a good word for it by the end of the video, I promise. We're just going to paint the apothecary white over these details. We're also going to paint apothecary white over these little icons that are down here. Once that apothecary white is dry, we're going to shade all of the gold armour with, you guessed it, 
Gillum and Flesh. There's a bit of a theme with this video. So yeah, we're just gonna paint the Gillum and Flesh all over the gold armor, taking extra special care not to go over any of the details that we've already painted in, that we don't want to be shaded in this manner. And to finish off the shading, we're going to add some Basilicanum Grey to all those silver parts. And there's not very many, so we're just going to carefully add it. Like so. Next up, we're going to highlight all of those white robes and all of the white details around the sarcophagus floating thing of death uh, with Old Suen Grey. So we're just going to pick out the raised edges of the robes, like so. And any of the other white details, we're just going to pick out the edges, so on the reliefs as well. Next, we're going to paint in the candle lights with Eandon Yellow, and we're going to just use some Eandon Yellow to go from the base of the candle and paint upwards, just like this. Next up, we want to highlight all of the gold with some Liberator Gold. Next, I'm going to paint the gems in, and this is the heart on the, the shield thing there, and we're going to paint the, there's one on the forehead, and there's one down here on the ankle as well. And for this, I'm going to use Flesh Terrors Red. So I'm just going to take some Flesh Terrors Red on my brush. I'm just going to start painting it over. And finally, just to finish off the sarcophagus, I'm going to highlight some of the red details. And so for the gems, I'm just going to place a dot of Evil Sun Scarlet. And for the heart, I'm just going to highlight the bottom edge. like so. And with that, the sarcophagus and the body and the base of St. Catherine are now finished. As you can see, the model is really starting to come together now. And it's starting to look pretty spectacular. So the next section that we're going to deal with are going to be the cherubs that you can see holding up various bits. So the first colour we're going to work on with the cherubs is the flesh and we're going to be using Gilliman flesh for this. You can vary it out or use a different flesh colour paint if you wish but I'm using Gilliman flesh because it gives a nice light pale kind of clean flesh as it were. So we're just going to start painting this over all of the cherubs skin. I'm going to do this across all of our flat flesh on all of the cherubs. Once that Gilliman flesh is dry, we're going to paint the wings with apothecary white. So we're just going to quite liberally throw this apothecary white onto all of the wings, making sure we get it right in there and amongst all the recesses. Once that apothecary white is dry, we want to layer up all of these wings with some thinned down 
also in grey. So we're just going to pick a set area to start and we're just going to start layering up, taking care to leave all of the areas where that apothecary white has settled. Just to give us some contrast. Ha! <laughs> With that Ulthu and Grey applied, we're now going to move on to all of the paper details. And for this, we're going to be using Skeleton Horde. So I've got my medium layer brush. I'm just going to take some on the brush. And much like I did with the stone, I'm just going to make contact with the model and pull it down. Make contact and pull it down, much like that. So we just kind of want to get it nice and smooth color on the paper. You don't want it to be too dark. You want to capture all of those recesses. Like this. We just want to take it like a section at a time. So now that, that first bit's done, we can move underneath and do the next bit. Like so. so. Just going to keep going. I'm going to do this on all of the paper parts that you can see dyed around. With that skeleton hoard applied, we're now going to work on the metallics. And for this, we're going to be using some, you guessed it, thinned down iron warriors. What a surprise. So for this, we're going to just find all of the metal parts on all of these cherubs. So these include things like the masks, and the various plugs and things, and the, this guy's little chest plate here, and all the cybernetics that you can see dotted around some of the models. So you just want to go around and do all of these, and we're nearly there. Once those silver details are finished, we're going to paint in the gold ones. And there's not very many of these, so we should be very quick. So the first one is the, uh, the sensor hanging down here at the bottom of this cherub. And there is another one on the chest of this one here. And lastly, there's the outer ring of the icon here. With that gold applied, we're going to first, next, we're going to paint some of the black details. And these are things like the various straps and some of the masks that you can see around the, uh, the cherubs. And also this one's pants. So we're going to be using Black Templar for this and um, we're just going to very carefully paint the Black Templar onto these details that we want to be black. With those black details applied we're very nearly to start shading and highlighting all the things we've just done. but. The only thing that's left to do are the various pipes and tubes you can see scattered around on various cherubs. So you've got three on the chest here and the two coming out of the head and there's some in the skull of this one. So you can use kind of whatever covers you like to do this bit here, but I'm going to be using three. So I'm going to be using Blood Angels Red, Yandan Yellow and Dark Angels Green. And we're going to kind of try and alternate the cables. Yeah, in terms of the colours. So starting with the Blood Angels Red, give it a bit of a shake. I'm going to take some on my brush. I'm just going to pick a cable. So I'm going to start over here on this one and I'm just going to paint Blood Angels Red all over 
that particular cable. Try and make sure I get round the back as well and over the top. Now that one's done, I'm going to pop some Dark Angels green onto the one on the other side of his head. So exactly the same way that I did with the Blood Angels red. Just going to use Dark Angels green. I'm going to go around all of these cables like this, just kind of alternating between colours so I get some nice variation on the model. Once all those cables are dry, as an optional, optional stage, you can do what I'm going to do, and that's to paint some hazard stripes on the, all the yellow cables that I've painted. And this I'm just going to use some Black Templar, and I'm just going to pick my cable and I'm just going to draw some black lines going diagonally across the cable, like so. Just trying to keep straight lines as I go. I'm not going to worry too much about the colour being too solid at the moment, because this is just as a guide track, as it were, so that I can colour them in darker once I've got my hazard stripes in where I like them. I'm just going to keep going all the way around the cable. Like this. I'm going to go around and do all of this on all of the yellow ones. And with those hazard stripes added to those yellow cables, uh, the, the, the wires and stuff are now complete. So now we can finally continue with the rest of the details. And what we're going to do is we're going to shade all the metallic parts with some basilicanum grey. So we're just going to be very, very careful around that flesh because basilicanum grey will really show up. It's very, very obvious when you make that splodge on to onto the Gilliman flesh. So just take your time and be careful doing this. Because you don't you really don't want to get this uh splodged at this time. Not when we're so close to finishing. With that basilicon and grey applied we're now going to do some iron hand steel highlights. And so we're going to do this in two different ways. So on the on the big icon that we've got here, we're just going to layer this and uh, to make it nice and bright. And uh, like, so we're just going to paint the iron steel like so over the large flat areas, taking care to avoid where that basilicon and grey has settled. Whereas for all the kind of the smaller parts of metal, like on this mask down here, we're just going to apply an edge highlight to all the raised edges. So we just want to go around and do all of these silver details. Like so. And next we're going to highlight all of the gold with Liberator Gold. So we're just going to Hit all the edges with that Liberator Gold. With all of the metallics and all of the details now based and shaded and highlighted the way we want them, we're now just going to do the last bit, which is the flesh, before we do the lenses. So I've lied to you there, it's not the last bit. So we're going to use some Flayed One flesh, and we're just going to go around each of these cherubs, and we're going to do it one by one, and we're just going to pick the absolute raised edges of each of the kind of the muscles and all of the faces and we're just going to give these a highlight all of the areas where you expect the light to catch on the skin so you just want to go around 
and do this for all of the cherubs and then we're going to do the lenses and then we're done With the skin highlights applied, we can now move on to the lenses and onto the eyes. So for the lenses, we're going to be using some Flesh Terrors Red just to block in over the silver that we've painted. Like so. And you'll see these lenses all over these cherubs in their arms, in their eyes, I should say. I'm just gonna use Flesh Terror's Red for all of them. Once that Flesh Terror's Red is dry, we're gonna use some Fire Dragon Bright to just place a dot on each of these lenses just to give it a highlight. So we just wanna do this in the middle of each one. Once that fire dragon bright is dry, we're gonna do the eyes and there's only three eyes left to do, so we've got the two on this Jeff Cherub, and there's one over here on the right. So we're gonna use some thinned down Screaming Skull to give us the white of the eye. And we're just gonna be very, very careful here to just paint the Screaming Skull over the eyeball, like so. And once that Screaming Skull is dry, we're gonna use some Black Templar give it a pupil. So we're just gonna use a little dot of it. I'm just gonna use a very steady hand to place a dot of the black in the middle of the eye. Sometimes it takes a couple of goes. And with that, the cherubs are done. And this means now that the kind of the central feature of the Triumph of St. Catherine is now finished. So you could quite happily stick this down to the base, which I haven't done just yet, um, but I suspect I probably will. Um, but yeah, so it's starting to really come together um, and it's starting to look pretty fantastic so the next section we're going to start doing is the sisters themselves so now that the base and the sarcophagus and the cherubs and all that stuff is done we're now going to move on to the sisters um now as you can see there are six of them as you'll know from the box art and from owning your own mod miniature so I'm not gonna go through each one one by one, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna kind of do like all the black at once and then all the red at once and then any kind of individual details to each of them, I'm gonna call them out as we go. So for example, on this lady, we'll do stuff for the, uh, the, the flowers that she's just kind of littering with. Um, clearly she's the one who's thrown her petals all over the floor on the base. Um, same for things like the candles and on this one, for example, the sword, shield and the sword, they're slightly different. So we're going to go through it like that. Um, so yeah, I'll see you when I'm next from painting. So the first colour we're going to start with, you'll be unsurprised to hear, is the black robes and armour. Uh, and it's slightly different for all six of them. So make sure to check out the box art as you go. Um, but in order to do the black, what we're going to do is use 
the silicon gray as a base coat and then we're going to use black templar over the top of that so we take some basilicon and gray on our brush and then we start painting it onto all the areas we want to be black and in this sister's case it's going to be the robes so we're just going to start painting that basilicon and gray all over like this and it doesn't need to be too smooth or too you know delicate we um we're just wanting to get this down there to give the black some something to cling on to and it makes the black templar just nice and dark and smooth once we put it on there rather than having to use you know rather than having to be careful or taking our time with it so we're just going to do this all over the black details i'm going to do this on all six sisters as well Once that Basilicanum grey is dry, we're now going to cover over it with some black Templar. And for this, we want to be a little bit more controlled than we were with the Basilicanum grey. So we just want to pick a point on the model to start. We want to make contact with the model and just pull it down. And we just want to be very careful with these brush strokes so we don't overload the model too much. Because although we want it to be nice and dark, we don't want it to kind of completely destroy all that natural highlighting that the contrast has left us. So we just want to very carefully go around the model. Once that black Templar is dry, we're going to highlight all of the black areas with some thin down Dawnstone. So we're just going to grab a little bit of it on our brush, as per usual. We're just going to pick all of the raised edges and we're just going to do a very thin highlight along all of these. And this is where on all of those black details that we've painted. So the robes and the armor and the gloves and all that kind of stuff. We just want to go around doing this and then we'll move on. Once those Dawnstone highlights are applied, we're going to do some Administratum Grey. And this is just going to be a little spot highlight on the very tips of the um, edges. So, for example, on the cloak down here, we just want to do a little bit of it running along like this to give the impression of the light just catching the edge of the robe. So we're just going to go around all of the uh, parts that we've highlighted, just picking out these bits like this. And we're nearly done. Once those administratum grey highlights are applied, we're going to do something very clever and in order to kind of just blend the black and the greys together we're going to do a five to one rough mix of contrast medium and levard and blue and we're going to do this all over the soft part so this is really just the cloaks um we're going to leave the armor because we want that to kind of have a little bit more of a harder edge but for this we're just going to grab some levard and blue and we're just going to almost like a glaze we're just going to do it all over those highlights all over the cloak as well, just to make that black look, just look nice and deep and rich. And also just blend all of those highlights together. So we're just gonna go around and do this on all of the cloaks and all of the soft like skirts and things. Like down here. With that blue glaze applied, now all of the black cloth is finished. So we're gonna move on to the red. And for this, we're gonna use Blood Angels Red. And this is gonna be our first coat that we do. So we're just gonna grab some on our brush. I'm gonna pick some cloth. And this is usually the interiors of the robes or some of the hoods. So you can use the box art to find where it should be. But first we're gonna just 
start painting Blood Angels Red all over this cloth, like so. With that Blood Angels Red applied, we're now going to highlight all of the cloth with some Evil Sun Scarlet. So we're just going to pick out, much like with the black cloth, we're just going to pick out all of the raised details. And we just want to do a highlight on each of them. Once that Evil Sun Scarlet is dry, we're going to do a spot highlight of Fire Dragon Bright. And in order to do this, we're just going to grab a teeny tiny little bit of it on our brush, and we're just going to pick the sharpest corners of these uh, folds in the cloak. So we're just going to go kind of around about here at the tip of the cloak. Same for around about here. We're just going to go across all six and we're just going to do this. We're just going to find all of these parts, give it the illusion of light catching on the cloak. And finally, for all the red cloth, I've created a roughly six to one mix of contrast medium and flesh terrors red. And I'm going to use this just to blend all of those highlights together with the red. So we're just going to grab some on our brush, maybe not that much, and we're just gonna brush it over all of those red parts that we've just highlighted, including the basic cloth, which hasn't had any highlights. And it's just, one makes the cloth make nice and rich, but also just kind of really pulls together all of those highlights with, with, the, uh, with the base color, with the Blood Angels Red. So I'm going to go across all of the saints. I'm going to do this, just being very careful not to drown any of these sections in the flesh treasure because we don't want it to be too dark. We want to get this nice kind of deep, rich crimson color that the flesh terrors red will give us over all those highlights. So go around, do all of the reds like this, and then we'll move on to the next details. Now that the red's completed, we can move on to the rest of the details. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do all of the bone and parchment and all of that kind of stuff that's scattered across all of the miniatures. So these would be things like these hanging scrolls here on this sister, and things like the pages of the book here and on the scrolls hanging from her belt in the interior of this hood. So we're gonna go across all six and we're gonna do these things with skeleton horde. So we're gonna grab a little bit on our small airbrush. We're just gonna pick a detail that we wanna start with. So in this case, this large scroll, and we're just gonna paint a nice even coat, nice and steadily so as not to overwhelm any of those creases with the skeleton horde, because again, we want this to be nice and smooth, like we did when we painted the large part on the Triumph of St. Catherine coffin cherub thing. We just want to be quite considered with how we're placing this, like that. Hoping to just get the skeleton horde in the recesses to give it a nice soft shadow, and not get any kind of splodges on the large open areas for things like that. So we're gonna, gonna go around and we're gonna do all of these skeleton horde details across all of the miniatures. Once that skeleton horde is dry, we're gonna pick out all of the remaining red details with Flesh Terror's Red. So on this sister, for example, it's things like these straps that are holding all the scrolls together. So we're just gonna very carefully paint Flesh Terrors Red over these details. So 
Once those red details have been painted in, we're going to move on before we highlight them and get a few more base colours done. So what we're going to do is we're going to do all the leather. So this is things like the holsters and the various belts and things that the sisters have. And for this, we're going to be using snake bite leather. So we're just going to pick a leather detail. So for example, this gun holster down here, and we're just going to brush this snake bite leather onto the holster. Like so. And next up, we want to paint all the silver data details with some thinned down iron warriors. So in this case, we're attacking things like the sword. Once all that silver is dry, we're going to paint in all the wooden parts. And these are the staff on this sister, the bottom half of the banner back on this sister, and the inside of the sensor bearer on this sister. So the colour we're going to be using for this is Saigor Brown, just like we did on the sarcophagus itself. So we're going to give that a quick shake. And we're just going to... Grab our brush and get a good amount on because we want it to be nice and dark just like with the sarcophagus and we're just going to carefully brush it on in even strokes without our brush leaving the model as much as we can help it. That way we don't kind of get an inconsistent pattern and we keep the colour nice and consistent just like how we want it, like so, to keep it nice and dark. So we're going to go on all three of these wooden parts and we're just going to go around all of them just like this. Once that side gold brown is dry, we can now paint all the gold details. And to find all the gold details, you just need to look across the box art across each of the sisters. Um, but on this, girl, on this girl here, it's things like this part of the frame on the back banner and the eyes, the inquisitorial eye icons or ecclesiastical icons, whatever they are, these are all gold. And things like the little skull here on the gorget. Once all that Retributor armour is dry, we're going to move on and do the white parts and then before we do any shading and highlighting of those other details. So what we're going to use is Apothecary White. I'm just going to find all of the white details and this on this particular sister, it's things like the statue on the shield and also on the shoulder pad, this emblem here. And also, crucially, the hair across all of the sisters, we want to be this white colour. So we're just going to go around and use the box art to help you once again to find all of these details and just coat them in apothecary white. Once that apothecary white is dry, we're now going to shade all of those metallic parts. And for this, we're going to use basilicon and grey. So we're just going to pick a spot on any of the sisters. We're just going to start painting silicon and grey over all the gold and all the silver. Once that silicon and grey is dry, we're going to paint all the candle tips. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use Egandan yellow to put the yellow of the flame on. And then we're going to just put a tip of Blood Angels red on the top. Um, and whilst it's still wet. So we just take our yand and yellow, we start from the bottom and pull it up, like so. And make sure we do both sides. Like 
like this. And then whilst it's still wet, let me just put a bit of that yam and yellow off there. Uh, whilst it's still wet, we take our Blood Angels Red and just a little bit, and just on the very tip of the candle, we just add a small amount. Make sure to wash your brush between amounts so as not to contaminate your Blood Angels Red. And we just similarly on the other side. Like this. With those candle flames done, we're now ready to begin highlighting the model uh, before we do any of their unique details, like their faces are all different and various things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of the white parts and we're going to be using Ulthu and Grey with this. So we thin some down on our palette and then we just pick an area that we want to start with. So I'm going to start with these rosary beads and we're just going to apply this highlight of Ulthu and Grey on all of the raised details. Like so. I'm just going to keep going around all of these white details across all of the models. And then we'll move on to the metallics. Once all that all through and grey is highlighted, we're going to highlight all the silver with iron hand steel. And next up, we want to highlight all of the gold details with Liberator Gold. You can say many things about me, but predictable is not one of them. I'm kidding. So obviously, we're just going to pick out all the gold details and we're just going to do some edge highlights just to brighten that gold back up again after the basilicon and grey like so. So we're just going to go around all of these sisters and pick out all the gold. Once those gold details are dry, we're going to highlight all the bone and parchment and, so, and the candles. And we're going to do this with Screaming Skull. So we're just going to thin some down on our palette and just pick out the raised details. And on the parchment and things and like on this row we're just going to pick out the raised areas of the colour that we want to have a highlight like that. So you want to, as per usual, head around and just pick out all of these With that Screaming Skull applied, we can now start to rattle through and finish off the sisters one by one with their unique details. And the model we're going to start with is the Simulacrum of the Ebon Chalice, or this lady carrying a flaming cup. So we're going to do the, the flaming cup, and we're going to be using three colours for this. We're going to be using Eandon Yellow, Griffhound Orange, and Blood Angels Red. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Eandon Yellow first, then some Griffhound Orange, and then some Blood Angels Red, but we're going to do it all whilst it's still wet, so it blends it all together nicely and gives us that kind of organic look of fire. So starting with the and Yellow, we're just going to throw a load of and Yellow all over the place we want the flames to be.
like this. So with that yand and yellow applied, I'm just going to give our brush a quick wash. And then we're going to get some Griff Hound Orange. And we're going to, about halfway along the flames, round about there, we're just going to brush this yand and yellow, not yand and yellow, Griff Hound Orange, on like so. I'm going to wash our brush every time we need to get some more Griffound Orange so as not to contaminate any of our pots. Like that. Then once we've done with our Griffound Orange, we're going to take some Blood Angels Red I'm going to be a little bit more careful with how we apply this. We're just going to add the tips of the flames. Like this. And just kind of keep going. Like this, almost in a dabbing motion. Or a stipple effect. If you really want to, as a final touch, we can add a dot of black Templar to the ends of the very highest flames. So we just want to do like this. And lastly, to finish her off, we're going to paint the flesh. And for this, we're going to be using Wildwood for her because we want her flesh to be quite dark. So we're going to just very carefully take some on our brush and we're just going to under the hood, you can see like this. Next up, we're going to finish off the Spirit of St. Catherine, and we're going to be using Gilliman of Flesh, and this is for her face. So we just want to very carefully around that hair that we've already painted in, paint the Gilliman of Flesh over her skin. Next, we're going to highlight her sword edge with some Stormhose Silver to give it a real sharp look. We're just going to run it along the outside edges of the blade. Like so. Next, we want to highlight her face with some thinned down flayed one flesh. Just want to attack the things like the bridge of the nose with this, the edges of her lips and her, eye, and her eyebrows, eyelids I should say. Next we want to dot in her eyes with some screaming skull just to give us the white of the eye. And finally we want to add her pupil using some black templar. So we just want to take a tiny dot on our brush and in the middle of the eye place the pupil. Sometimes it takes a couple of goes just to make sure it gets the right darkness because you don't want to overload the area. Next, we're going to finish off the petals of the Bloody Rose. 
And for this, we're going to, like with the simulacrum of the ebb and chalice, lots of words to remember, we're going to use three colours, Volupus pink, Blood Angel's red, and Flesh Terror's red. So we're going to start with a coat of Volupus pink. We want to be really quick about this because we're going to do some blending. So we'll do it on, on this large drum of the uh, of the petals now. So we're going to start with the Volupus pink, and we're just going to put this all over the petals. I'm being quite speedy here because I want to do some wet blending as I've said already, but it pays to be careful. So just continuing the Volupus pink. Nearly there. Yeah, so once the Volupus pink is on there, we want to take some Blood Angels red and we just want to add little piles of this here and there. So we're just going to kind of pick an area and we're just going to start placing it on. So we're just going to do it around here. I'm going to wash my brush each time so I don't contaminate. Once again, Blood Angel's red. I'm just going to pick, do it around here. I've inadvertently drawn an S. Like so. Then I'm going to take the Flesh Terror's red. In much the same way, I'm going to be a little bit more sparing with this. I'm just going to pick some areas to add. Flesh tear is red. Like that. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the petals that she's scattering. And I'm going to move on to her face. Similar to the Spirit of St. Catherine, we're going to paint the petals of the Bloody Rose sister, her face with Gilliman flesh. So just want to be really careful around all of those details we've already painted. So the, the armour and the hair. And once again, to finish her off, we're just going to highlight the bridge of her nose with some flayed worm flesh. And moving on now to the sensor of the sacred rose. We're going to paint the vine coming around this odd looking candle shaped thing. Uh, we're going to use some dark angels green for this. So we're just going to pick a point to start. I'm going to start right here and I'm just going to start painting the Dark Angels green very carefully around those bone parts that I've already painted in. Once that's dry we're going to paint the smoke coming off the sensor and so we're going to be using Apothecary White followed by Basilicanum Grey whilst it's still wet much like we've done on the last couple of miniatures. So we're just going to slap the apothecary white all over this smoke trail first. I'm just going to be quite quick about it.
like so. Then we give our brush a quick wash and then we grab some Basilicanum Grey. And what we're going to do with this is we're just going to kind of draw lines going across it with, with across the smoke. So we just want to kind of pick a point like there and draw line like this around certain parts of the smoke. You pretty much only need one brushful to do this. Think of it like that's your lot. This will give you plenty of space to work in. And once again, just to finish this sister off, we're going to do the flesh with Wildwood. So we just want very little on our brush. And you can see the face is hiding right in there under the hood, where you would expect a face to be. So we're just going to carefully maneuver our brush in there. And we're just going to take a couple of passes at it with some Wildwood. We don't want too much because we don't want to splodge this all over the place. We just want to be very careful on the way in. I'm just going to dab at it. Next up, we're going to move on to the simulacrum of the Argent Shroud. And we're going to start with the face. So we're going to be using Dark Oath Flesh for this one. And we're just going to very carefully try not to overwhelm the facial features with this because it's considerably darker than Gilliman Flesh and it's very easy to kind of swallow the features of, of a face with this paint. So we just want to be very careful as we apply it. Once that dark oath flesh is dry, we're going to highlight it with some thinned down Kislev flesh. So we just want to be very careful on her features, but we just want to take a highlight across the nose as per usual. We just want to kind of around the edges of the mouth. As well, across her brow. As you can see, I've gone ahead and I've finished off her eyes in the same way we did with the Spirit of St. Catherine. Screaming Skull for the white and Black Templar for the pupil. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to do the script featured in her book. And for this, we're going to be using some Saigor Brown, which is, again, similar to how we would do eyes or anything like this. We don't want very much on our brush at all. We just want a little bit. And we just want to kind of pick an area on the page and we just want to start writing these little tiny lines like so, using the Saigor Brown. And we're just going to really take our time here to carefully paint these small, thin lines to resemble the script. And rather helpfully, the book is built in such a way that you can see where to write. So you can do a little bit up at the top here and in these paragraphs here on the left. So we're just going to go to and fill these all in, uh, and then this sister is nearly done. Next, we're going to move on to the icon of the Valorous Heart, and we're going to start, as always, with the flesh. We're going to use Wildwood for this. So we just want to be very careful with how much we put on a brush, not that much as I just did there. And I'm just going to slowly lower my brush in. I'm going to paint this all over the face. And finally, to finish off the flesh, we're going to give it the tiniest highlight of Carrick Stone. So we're just going to take the teeny tiniest bit of amount, and we just want to place a bit of it on the bridge of the nose, like so. We want to kind of go in from the side, and just do 
a small line highlight on any of the other raised details of the face. With the face finished, we're now going to move on to the script. So what we're going to do is we're going to use, again, Cygor Brown to write some tiny little lines of script going down this large piece of parchment here. And we're also going to write the word Lucia going across the banner scroll on the standard. So we just want to take a teeny tiny bit on our brush and then kind of start painting these wavy lines at a point where we want to, we're comfortable starting. So I'm going to start right up against this strap here. And start. Once that brown is done, we're gonna just use some flesh terrors red to add a few little accents here and there. So we wanna just grab again, similar tiny bunch, uh, tiny bit on our brush. I just wanna pick an area where I've left a gap. So there's a, quite a good one right here. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna try and do a little bit of a Imperial Eagle. by drawing some straight lines with the flesh terrors red, roughly equidistant to each other. And taking a little bit more and drawing in the body like so, and then adding some more of the wing. Next thing we're gonna do is work on the gems. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight the already red um, flesh terrors red that we've got on here with some evil sun scarlet so we just want to around the kind of bottom edge of the heart just want to start painting in this evil sun scarlet like this. We just want to kind of make it nice and strong. Like this. Once that Evil Sun Scarlet is dry, we want to use some Wild Rider Red. In much a similar fashion, we're going to thin down a little bit more so than usual. We're just going to again start from this side and we're just going to start layering it over like so. You just want to leave some of that Wild Rider Red, sorry, Evil Sun Scarlet showing underneath. So we get a bit of a transition going on. So maybe again on the back. Just want to. Once that Wild Rider Red is dry, we're going to use some Fire Dragon Bright to just add a real pop of colour to really get that shine in there. So we just want to take this right down the outside like this. And we just kind of want to keep, keep layering it up.
Next up, we're just gonna do a really thin, almost like a glaze of Blood Angels Red all over this gem, just to kind of really blend all of these colors together. So we just wanna not use very much. Like so. And just like that, the miniature is now finished. I mean, you'd be hard pressed to call it a miniature. This thing is enormous and there's so much detail and it's been such a wonderful experience to paint for all of you guys. I hope you've really enjoyed the tutorial and I hope you've learned a lot of cool stuff. Um, my particular highlights are the base and the red cloth on each of the sisters. I'm just so chuffed to bits with how they've all come out. I think it just, I, I'm absolutely, I'm kind of stumbling over my words because honestly, once you've assembled the whole thing together, it just takes your breath away, just like it did in, in the videos and the announcement posts when I first saw this miniature. Um, I adore it. I hope you adore it. I hope you have fun painting yours as much as I have had mine. And I hope that this video has helped in some way, shape or form how to paint your own triumph of saint catherine so thank you very much for watching like comment subscribe find me on instagram at war hipster and yeah enjoy the miniature thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one